Okay, so the next thing that happened was uh, we moved to Connecticut, and uh, uh, I didn't stay at that same school, uh, you know, that I was telling you about in Connecticut, but I went to the local high school instead. Um, that other school was called Greens Farms Academy and it had dress code and everything like that, but this was just a regular local high school. And, uh, uh, I wanted to take piano lessons, so I told my mother about that, and, uh, and we found this piano teacher named, uh, uh, Susan Green. Now, the reason I mentioned Susan Green is I feel like she was my first teacher, somehow, of a, of a spiritual type, you know. Uh, she was a, uh, a serious 60s chick, you know. She, she had been, uh, uh, a major acid head, and she was into all kinds of experimental music and atonal stuff, and just regular composition and tonal tonal composition also, but uh, uh, improvisation. And you know, she lived in groups that took acid and mushrooms all the time, and just classic '60s lady. And uh, wasn't long before I wanted to do her. She she really had kind of a sexual vibe, or at least that's uh, part of the way that I sort of interpreted the energy. I mean, uh, it it just it just w was a really wired thing. She charged me up, you know. I felt the charge, and there there was there was definite uh, brightness about her and about uh, like our whole thing, you know, and she said the same thing, that she got really wired from me coming over and stuff, too, you know, but, uh, you know, I guess just because I was a horny adolescent young guy, uh, I, I felt a lot of that sexually, but it was really something pretty uh, intense and bright, you know, and uh, she got me into meditation, she gave me a book uh, called uh, uh, something like uh, Siddha Yoga uh, the science of Hamsa, and uh, that was her guru, Muktananda. Siddha, Siddha Yoga is the whole branch of, uh, of meditation that uh, was brought over here by Muktananda, I think, in the 60s. Uh, he eventually got into trouble for messing around with uh, his, his little teenage disciples, but it seems like that always happens to gurus, you know. <laughs> Must be hard for them to resist. But anyway, uh, so, uh, uh, she gave me the book. I remember it was just this very simple book with pictures of Muktananda and things, and just very simple statements, and it said, like, uh, when you realize that there is no difference between you and that, you will, oh yeah, but, yeah, Hamsa means, Ham means I am, and Sa means that. So you're supposed to breathe in and think, Ham and then breathe out and say, sa, that. So it's like, I am that, you know. Um, and uh, and he said, when you realize the state of total intoxication, um, it, you know, when, when you finally realize there is no difference between you and that, you'll reach a state of total intoxication, you know. And that's what enlightenment is, basically, you know, so... So I was like, cool, I'll give that a shot, you know. And so I, uh, so I, uh, you know, did that. And, uh, and uh, you know, I liked it. I started to get into meditation and stuff. And uh, I remember once getting up from, I don't know, for some reason this sort of sticks in my mind. It's funny the things that stick in your mind. I don't know why. It, but I just remember getting up from uh, meditating and, and uh, seeing, uh, like, flashes of purple and stuff, purple, blue, just sort of, you know, in my eyes or on things that I was looking at, and I was like, wow, that's neat, and then I told Susan Green about it, and she, she said, like, that's the blue light, that's what Muktananda talks about, you know, and uh, so another thing that they would always talk about is something called the blue pearl, which was a, like this bright p blue point, and I did see that sometimes, not staying there, but just flashing for a second, the blue pearl, <laughs> so 
So I was all into that. And, uh, uh, I went to an ashram with her, uh, the city yoga ashram, which, uh, which was by then, uh, Muktananda wasn't there anymore. I'm not sure if he's dead or what, but, uh, it was, uh, Chitvalasananda, which was a woman, uh, that's Muktananda's, uh, successor, you know, and, uh, she wasn't there when I went there in high school, but I, after high school, I should talk, I'll talk about this later, I went back to that ashram after high school, because this sort of was also sort of part of my early spiritual development or something, but, uh, I went, uh, there after high school, uh, only to be kicked out of the place, uh, for not bowing to the guru, (laughs) but I'll tell that story later, uh, but yeah, um, so I, you know, I took piano lessons. We were studying classical piano and stuff, but it was clear that we were. She was my teacher in some other way. You know what I mean? Almost like one of those pre-planned things. You know, spiritually on the spirit planes, pre-planning some meeting or some something like that. You know, but uh, yeah. But then uh, I also started smoking pot. Um, that my brother had gotten from his school, and, uh, uh, that's what I'll talk about in the next, in the next one. Okay, see ya.